Hi there, Lester Fields here, this time with some updates to Fallout 76 that have come out of QuakeCon 2018. There are a few things I want to go over, so let's get started. First are some clarifications to the PvP systems in the game. Todd Howard again confirmed that your character can't be attacked by another player character until you've reached level 5, and when you do get attacked, it's more of a slap in the face, as if in challenge. Your opponent's weapon won't do much damage to you, it's more to get your attention. You can then choose to engage or ignore your attacker. Engaging will cause their weapons to start doing more damage to you. There's a reward of caps for defeating your opponent, and you get to steal all their junk. Not weapons, or armor, or caps, just junk they've collected and have in their inventory. The same is true for the other player if they defeat you, so upon dying you'll only lose the junk you were carrying. Now, Todd did talk about the systems they have in place to prevent griefing. If you choose to ignore the challenge of another player, they can continue attacking you. Their weapons will still do minimal damage, but it's still possible for them to kill you this way. However, several things happen if they do kill you. First, they become a wanted murderer, and receive no caps, junk, or anything else from the kill. Second, and remember each player is marked on the map for all to see, their map icon becomes a red star to mark their wanted status. However, they become unable to see any other players on the map while they are a wanted murderer, making it easier for others to descend upon them without warning and kill them in turn for the cap reward they generate due to being wanted. Finally, the cap reward for killing a wanted murderer comes directly out of the wanted character's own caps stash, so they actually lose the money in-game if they are killed. Now, I understand that this won't prevent everyone from griefing, but at least it discourages the practice by offering no reward of any kind for doing so, and a possible penalty under certain conditions. There is also a way to set the game to ignore a player who is continuously accosting you, and this lasts until the end of that particular game session. I really wish this aspect was delved into more during the panel, but knowing it's there is at least something positive. Another thing to note about dying in Fallout 76. It was mentioned that when you die, you can respawn anywhere that you've unlocked, and the way it works is that both the closest respawn point to where you died, as well as the entrance to Vault 76, are free to respawn at, and any other respawn point open to you will cost an amount of caps based on how far it is from where your character died. The beta was touched on, with Todd and company talking about how it'll be out in October, but unlike what Pete Hines had said on Twitter recently, there was absolutely no mention of any sort of pre-beta to get players into the game any earlier than October. The character creation aspect was shown very briefly, and it seems updated a little bit from the one in Fallout 4. Charisma was discussed, and I know folks were wondering how it would work in the game. Via the description of the Charisma stat, it is the ability to lead and help others. It allows you to share higher point perks, and also affects your awards from group quests and prices when you barter. We got a better look at perk cards and how they work. At each level up from 1 to 50, you can increase one special stat by one point, with a cap for each stat set at 15 instead of the usual 10. The perk cards cost an amount of points each, so for instance, if you want to use one that costs 3 points, you need at least 3 points in the stat assigned to said perk card. Two, they can be swapped out at any point during gameplay, not just at level up. And leveling up doesn't stop at 50, but you no longer can assign another point to a special stat after level 50. Also, at every other level up, from levels 1 to 10, and thereafter every 5 levels, you'll receive a pack of perk cards to open. This will contain 4 perk cards, randomized of course, as well as a joke and a stick of gum. And yes, the stick of gum can be chewed to decrease your character's hunger for a time. 
it isn't clear if the joke serves any purpose other than an attempt at humor. Of note particularly is something they didn't talk about but can be deduced from looking at one of the perk cards they showed, and that is that yes, there will be bobbleheads in the game as this perk card points to. It lets you hear directional audio when in range of a bobblehead. Before I move on, I also wanted to clear up some misinformation I've seen passed around by fans regarding the perk card packs. Bethesda has made it clear that microtransactions in the game are for cosmetic purposes only, and that the perk card packs are gained solely through leveling up in the game. Some folks were worried that Fallout 76 would essentially become pay-to-win if players were able to purchase those perk card packs, but this simply is not the case. The game will also feature a new way to obtain character perks in the form of mutations. Characters that are well irradiated are prone to developing mutations in the game, and the one that was mentioned during the panel was one called Bird Bone, which gave the player character extra height when jumping, but also decreased his strength. There wasn't much more mentioned about mutations in the panel, so it isn't clear if everyone will give the player a bonus as well as some kind of penalty. Private servers are definitely happening according to Todd Howard, so that players will be able to mod their Fallout 76 experience. And finally we get to one of my favorite topics in any new Fallout game. There was confirmation that radio stations would indeed be a part of Fallout 76, and it will have more licensed tracks than in any previous Fallout game. Todd Howard talked about all the odd 1940s music that's out there, and I'm guessing there will be a fair bit of music from that era in the game. Personally, I'm hoping for more Bing Crosby songs. And that's pretty much everything that we learned from the QuakeCon panel. If anything, this information makes me even more excited about playing Fallout 76. But how about you? What do you think of the news? Leave a comment below. And until next time, thanks for watching.